Hello everyone and welcome back to Linux Network. Today I have some important news for all you desktop customization lovers and KDE fans out there. If you've been following the channel, you know I cover the latest and greatest in the Linux world. And when it comes to desktop environments, KDE Plasma is arguably the king of futures. But with great powers comes, well, occasionally great bugs. Today we are taking a deep dive into the freshly released KDE Plasma 6.5.5. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, it's just a point release, it's a bug fix update, why are we making a big deal out of it? Here is the thing, especially for those of you who might be new to Linux, just starting your journey, often the most important updates aren't the ones that add shiny new buttons or crazy animations. The most important updates are the ones that keep your system from crashing when you're in the middle of working or that fix that one annoying little glitch that has been driving you crazy for weeks. Plasma 6.5.5 is exactly that kind of update. It's the fifth bug fix update in the 6.5 series coming over a month after the last one. It focuses entirely on refinement, reliability and making your desktop experience smoother. So grab a coffee, sit back and let's break down exactly what's fixed, what's improved and why you should care. Let's get into it. First, we have to talk about the heavy lifters, Wayland and Kwin. For those of you who are new here, let me quickly explain. Kwin is the window manager for KDE. It's the engine that handles drawing your windows, moving them around, adding those cool transparency effects and managing your multiple monitors. If Kwin has a bad day, your whole computer feels broken. Wayland is the modern display protocol that is replacing the ancient X11. It's the future of Linux desktops, but it's complex and getting it perfect takes time. A massive chunk of the work in Plasma 6.5.5 went specifically into targeting Wayland and Kwin stability. The developers have addressed multiple fixes regarding input handling. Have you ever clicked something and it felt like the system hesitated? Or maybe a shortcut key didn't register instantly? This update tightens that up. They've also tackled cursor behavior under scaling. This is a big one for those of you with 4K monitors or laptops with high resolution screens. Sometimes, when you scale your interface up so the text is readable, the mouse cursor could act weirdly or appear the wrong size. That should be much more consistent now. They also fixed some drag and drop edge cases. There is nothing more frustrating than trying to drag a file from Dolphin into a web browser only for it to get stuck or not drop where you want it. These edge cases, which is developers speak for rare but annoying scenarios, have been smoothed out. Here is my favorite fix in this category, multi-monitor scenarios. If you use more than one screen, you know that Linux can sometimes be a bit finicky. This update brings more reliable screen targeting for window movement shortcuts. If you use keyboard shortcuts to throw a window from your left monitor to your right monitor, it used to sometimes get confused about which screen was the target. Plasma 6.5.5 makes sure the window actually goes where you told it to go. They also fixed an issue with window rule activation. KDE allows you to set specific rules for specific apps, like always open Spotify on Workspace 4. If those rules weren't triggering correctly before, they should be rock solid now. Even though Wayland is the focus, the KDE team hasn't forgotten about compatibility. X Wayland, which is the tool that lets older X11 apps run on the new Wayland system, received correction related to key repeat handling. If you're a gamer holding down the W key to walk forward or a coder holding backspace, key repeating is critical. This fix ensures that input doesn't get stuck or stutter. And for the legacy code, the pure X11 pads, they've done some build cleanup to ensure compatibility with newer versions of Qt. This basically means that even if you aren't using Wayland yet, the desktop won't break just because the underlying graphics toolkit got updated. It's all about future proofing. Alright, let's move away from the deep system stuff and look at what you can actually see on your screen, the desktop components and applets. KDE is famous for its widgets, those little tools you put on your panel or desktop. This release brings a ton of polish to them. Let's look at the weather applet. It's a small thing, but we look at it every day. The developers fixed several display issues here. If you're a weather nerd and the atmospheric pressure was displaying in the wrong unit, that's fixed. Have you ever looked at your weather widget at 10 pm and it showed a bright sunny icon? Yeah, that's fixed. It now correctly respects the time of day. There was a weird bug where if the temperature was exactly 0 degrees, it might have visibility issues. That's gone. 
Next up, kickoff. The main application launcher along with desktop containments and panel configuration, the behavior here has been corrected. Have you ever tried to rearrange your panel and the icons just wouldn't sit still or the settings menu acted glitchy? 6.5.5 smooths that out. Also, KRunner, that search bar that pops up when you start typing, has improved its search scoring. This means when you type fire, it's more likely to suggest Firefox immediately rather than some random files you named fireworks 5 years ago. It's smarter at guessing what you actually want. For the aesthetic crew, wallpaper previews now respect aspect ratio more consistently. When you're browsing for a new background, the thumbnail won't look stretched or squished anymore. It gives you a true representation of the image. And for those who use the notepad applet, those sticky notes you can put on your desktop, they now handle cursor positioning much more reliably, especially when you are pasting in text from external sources. No more jumping cursor when you're just trying to jot down a reminder. I want to take a quick second to pause here. We're going through a lot of changes, fixes and technical details. If you are finding this breakdown helpful or if you just love staying up to date with the Linux world without having to read through thousands of lines of code yourself, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to other Linux users who might be struggling with these exact bugs. And if you know a friend who uses KDE, share this video with them. They might thank you for letting them know these fixes are on the way. Alright, back to the update. Let's talk about system integration tools. These are the apps that manage your computer software and connections. First up is Discover. For new users, Discover is essentially the App Store of KDE. It's where you go to install programs, updates and add-ons. In Plasma 6.5.5, Discover resolves issues with refresh shortcuts. If you hit the button or shortcut to check for updates and nothing happened, that's resolved. They also fix some hard-coded platform naming issues, which is a bit technical but essentially makes the store more accurate in telling you where apps are coming from. Crucially, Flatpak permissions handling has been optimized. We all love Flatpaks because they work on any distro, whether you are on Debian, Fedora or PicaOS. But sometimes, managing what a Flatpak app is allowed to do, like accessing your microphone or your home folder, could be clunky in the settings. This update optimizes that process, making it safer and easier to manage your sandbox apps. Here is a really cool practical fix, Plasma Network Manager. Did you know KDE can generate a QR code for your Wi-Fi network? You can just show the screen to a friend, they scan it with their phone and boom, they are connected. No more reading out capital A underscore 1, 2, 3 and so on. Well, that feature had a bug specifically with WPA free networks, the newer more secure security standard. Plasma 6.5.5 corrects the QR code generation for WPA free. So now you can share your secure Wi-Fi instantly without issues. Moving on to the boring but essential stuff, power management and printers. The team applied targeted fixes to prevent incorrect authorization states. This usually means those moments when you try to change a printer setting or modify a power profile and the system asks for your password and asks again or just fails. That authorization flow is smoother now. They also fixed delayed resource cleanup. This is a performance tweak. It means when you stop using a device or close a heavy setting windows, the system frees up that RAM and CPU power faster rather than letting it hang around. A big one for our international viewers, UI updates after language changes. If you switch your system language from English to Spanish, for example, sometimes part of the UI wouldn't update until you reboot it. Now the system settings should reflect those changes much better without missing UI elements. Now for the under the hood section. This is for the tech savvy users who want to know what's happening deep inside the system libraries. Several Plasma libraries were cleaned up and modernized in this release. LibkScreen. This is the library that handles your screen management. It has removed obsolete backends and updated its test suites. This means the code is leaner and less prone to errors from old unused hardware standards. LibPlasma. The core library of the desktop. They addressed dialog positioning and focused behavior. This ensures that pop-up windows appear where you expect them to, not halfway off the screen. Plasma Activity Stats. They fixed string escaping issues. This is a security and stability fix to ensure data is read correctly by the activities tracker. And we can't forget Plasma Mobile. Even if you are on a desktop, the codebase is shared. 
components from the mobile version were updated with improved error handling and configuration loading. If you are one of the brave souls running Linux on a phone or tablet, this update brings you some love too. So that is the current state of Plasma 6.5.5. It's a massive list of polish, but what is coming next? KDE releases move fast. If you want more information on every single line of code change, you can check the release announcements on the full changelog. I'll link those in the description below. But here is the timeline you need to know. The next and actually the last update to the 6.5 series will be version 6.5.6 that is scheduled for release on March 10th that will be the final wrap up for this version. However, before we even get to that final bug fix there is a much bigger event on the horizon. Mark your calendars for February 17th that is the scheduled release date for Plasma 6.6. Plasma 6.6 is going to be a future release. While 6.5.5 is about fixing things, 6.6 is going to be about new things. It promises a range of exciting changes that we will definitely be covering here on the channel. So if you like new features, February is going to be a fun month. Now the big question, when can you get this update? As always this depends entirely on your Linux distribution. If you're using a rolling release distribution like Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed or maybe Bleeding Edge Pika OS setup, keep an eye on your repositories. Version 6.5.5 is expected to be released there in the coming days, if not already. You might literally have the update waiting for you right now. If you're on a fixed release distro like Fedora or Kubuntu, it might take a little longer to filter down to you or it might be held back until the next major system update, depending on their policy. To wrap this up, Plasma 6.5.5 isn't going to change the world, but it's going to make your world a little bit more stable and in the world of operating system, stability is king. I'm really happy to see KDE focusing so hard on the Wayland experience and multi-monitor support. These are the things that make Linux viable for daily drivers and gaming setups. What do you think? Are you experiencing any bugs in Plasma 6.5 right now that you hope this update fixes? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for our upcoming coverage of Plasma 6.6 .6 in February. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Catalin, this is Linux Network and I'll see you in the next one.